Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you about my bioponics system a bit because I've actually had a few questions about it. So I'll uh, go through, run you through a little bit about what's going on. But check this out, hey. Um, got lots of stuff. I've just cleared a bunch of stuff um, because now here in Perth it's uh, coming into springtime. So I want to get it up and running again, um, get everything uh, more organized so I can really get some produce out of this but come and check it out um, this is obviously the grow bed the same as um, uh, aquaponics or hydroponics system now there's a couple of things that I've done differently uh, because I've been developing the system for three years now there's a few things that I've uh, learned so what you can probably see is the um, this black sheet which is actually shade cloth the shade cloth um, uh, here, let, let me come and show you. Now check this out. Check this, this mint out here. I'll explain all of this. But see this stuff right here? If you can see that. This, that is um, poly pipe. So um, polyethylene pipe that's been um, shredded through my mulcher. And at one point I had a whole bunch of excess. So what I did is I just chucked it through my mulcher and I was like, hey, this is cool. This is a lot of biological surface area that I could use as a grow media. Um, and it, seem, it seems to work quite well, actually. So what I've done in, um, in the garden bed is actually put 100 mil, so uh, three or four inches, I guess, of um, this, uh, that um, shredded PV, uh, um, poly pipe down. And then I put the uh, shade cloth, and then I put the hydroton, the um, expanded clay on top of that. So now you have two different layers, and the idea is that um, what I noticed when I just had the um, expanded clay is there was a little bit more anaerobic um, area down there than I liked. And the, and the way I found that out was when I was digging around, pulling up plants or whatever, or ha having to change my system a bit, could smell a bit um, funky, you know, that, that anaerobic smell. So I know it's okay to have a little bit of um, anaerobic areas, but I wanted to make sure that there was like a, a really good flow of water through here. Um, and the, um, I'll, I'll have to show you some pictures as well, but the way the system works is there's a continuous flow system. It's not a flood and drain system. So there's continuous flow um, in that uh, poly pipe layer and the water actually comes up above that. What I'm trying to do is create a little um, ecosystem, a whole ecosystem like nature. So we've got the poly pipe under there, the shade cloth, um, which is really permeable, and then the um, expanded clay. So that's the grow bed. So um, let's f follow the water. We'll go down to, this is the, um, the sump. This is where my, my uh, pump is. And I just, uh, my pump died about six months ago, so I got a new one, and I actually downgraded the pump. So it was a 3,500 uh, litre an hour pump, and now I dropped it down to a 2,500 litre an hour pump, uh, because I'm not running an aquaponics system anymore. And the idea is I wanted to have um, a lower power, a lower wattage pump, so that I can use less power. The idea eventually is to create an airlift um, with a 12 volt um, DC air pump so I can hook it to a solar panel and have it running like that. But for now, um, I've got a 2500 litre an hour pump which is, I believe it is um, 30 something watts of power. Anyways, so that's, so, and, and you can see this pipe here, I'm actually using this, I put my, oh my watering can's not here, but I put, I, I use this to water my garden whenever I'm um, applying fermented plant juice or anything like that. So um, yeah, it's easy just to flip it over the side and fill up the watering can. Um, so the water goes down into here and then uh, what I've learnt is 25 mil uh, is a bit small, especially when you've got so much biology because uh, stuff grows on the walls, the algae and stuff grows on the walls so quickly. But so I've got the shortest amount of pipe. I don't know if you can see, but basically from there to there, that's the shortest amount of pipe, um, or, or very short at least. And then the pump in there goes straight 
up to the back here um, into the vortex brewer but let me just show you as well this is our bathroom here and i've got a basically a holding tank this holding tank is so that i've, I've got a 12 volt dc pump inside um, that i can pump the bath water out or in the shower we've got a little bucket um, sort of like one of those olive picking buckets or whatever that you that we stand in and then pump the water out into here so this is my holding tank um, and when I make sure that I don't pump anything that has um, any like um, noxious shampoo or anything like that we don't we use mostly all natural stuff anyways so um, yeah so then that pumps into there so that's second use water um, pump it into there and then I pump out of here to water all my pots if you can see I've got lots of containers um, so yeah, so that's going on there. Now check out this Vortex Brewer. I'm really excited about this. this I've, I've developed this over um, a couple of years now. Um, obviously from ideas from the internet, but you can see down there uh, what's going on in there. Um, and basically this is the part that I've found. Let's see if we can see right into that. There we go. So you can see it's a bit... Um, grows algae in there quite well especially with a white bucket but that's the area that I found that um, the water slows down quite a bit in the in the black poly pipe coming up um, I can always take that off and leave that in the Sun for a day and that cooks everything inside then I, it's easy to clean it out when it starts to get clogged up um, this grows algae the vortex brewer grows algae really quick um, so I got to scrape the sides because otherwise it actually really slows down the water but what I learned was a vortex um, is the the most efficient way to aerate water at a slow velocity so if you don't have much pressure you don't want to use like a venturi system um, you can use a vortex and what I really like about this is um, this is a 55 gallon drum uh, or 200 liter drum um, been cut down you can see I just put some PVC there to hold this up I used to have uh, and now this has a 25 mil PVC one inch PVC pipe going from inside the vortex brewer all the way down to about um, 20 centimeters um, above the bottom so I actually dropped lots of stuff in there uh, I just added some um, IMO3 today and some uh, fish amino acids in there as long as there's nothing too big that will clog up the fifth, uh, 25 mil um, I drop stuff in there it goes down and as you can see um, there's bubbles coming up so it's actually sucking air all the way down to the bottom of that drum so at first I just had it flowing to the top and there was it was pretty cool it's like an anaerobic layer in there anaerobic digester but the top was all aerobic so anything that floated up would become aerobic um, getting by eaten by the aerobic microbes but I wanted to get a little bit more um, air going through there so the bottom is still slightly um, anaerobic but with all that, with all those bubbles coming up, then that really creates like a flow, creates a flow. And then um, you can see it. So this is like a settling tank. So I put compost in there as well, worm castings in there. And then um, this comes around, uh, drops down into there. So that gets aerated again um, into like, this is basically, I'm growing mint in there because it grows really well. And um, I had to cut back my watercress. It was like massive. But um, I'm starting to grow the watercress in here so I can start harvesting it for fermented plant juice. Um, but yeah, uh, some spearmint, some peppermint, uh, spearmint, peppermint, and I got some mugwort. I just um, got some cuttings off. So I, yeah, I sort of use this to like hold cuttings in there or hold plants that I haven't planted yet as well. But all this root mass in there filters out any of the larger stuff. Um, and there's actually worms living in there too. I planted worms in these planted. Uh, I pl put worms in the um, floating planters and they seem to thrive in there even when there's no um, soil it's just that plastic um, shredded up PVC or um, poly pipe so that works really well and then um, so that's 40 mil coming out of the 55 gallon drum there's 40 mil I've just upgraded from 25 to 40 mil PVC coming out of the um, the second the secondary I guess large tank um, and now it drops down into here and you can see the water's overflowing there but what it is is actually a 90 mil stormwater um, pipe and it's like an L so it goes down and then uh, all the way across and that's got holes all the way through it but obviously it's blocked up and now it's just flowing over the top there 
But I'm just seeing, um, you know, it's uh, observe and learn and then make adjustments. So what I found the best thing in the system is just big pipes to really allow that flow. And you, you want to figure out where your anaerobic areas are because you don't want too many anaerobic areas. So I've got it as aerobic as I can at the moment. So the plants are filtering the um, the mass, uh, the any compost that's floating through. And then this system, um, the grow bed is just growing nuts. You can see the celery, I've uh, got some kale. Um, this is the Madeira vine and Anrodera cor cordifolia. And I've just um, harvested that for fermented plant juice. So there's lots of stuff here. I mean, lots of stuff in progress, but I thought I'd show you and check this out. So I, I just um, chucked some alfalfa seed in there just to see how it was going. And I've even um, harvested that for fermented plant juice. But I wanted to see if there would be um, nitrogen nodules growing on there. Now let's see if I can pull one up and see. Um, I hope you can see that, but that is, you can see those nodules starting to grow on there. Um, they're not massive, and I don't think they really need to be because there's, um, it's not a soil environment, it's a soil less environment. But you can see, um, yeah, there's some nodules on there, they seem to be doing alright, um, and everything seems to be aerobic, so it's working well. Now what I put in here, what I put in there is fermented plant juice. I rinse out my bakashi buckets in there. Um, what else? F fish amino acids, uh, IMO, a bit of uh, mostly worm castings, not so much compost that I make myself because it's quite chunky. Um, and then yeah, whenever I'm brewing um, like cider or beer, um, all that excess yeast, I just pour it into there. Um, and the only thing that I would add is trace minerals. So I do that with um, rock dust. I'm trying to find some volcanic rock dust, but there's not really um, volcanoes around this area except for some basalt, which I haven't got my hands on yet. So um, hopefully that's uh, lots of information. Please ask me questions. Um, if you have any ideas too, let me know. Um, that's great. So there you go. There's my bioponic system. Um, and yeah. Let's discuss it and, and I hope you, I've inspired you. Okay, cheers.